the London Film and Comic Con, and I'm here with Thomas Gofton, creator of Mind's Eye, the web series. We are the only thing standing between darkness and hope. We can become anything we believe ourselves to be, centuries old and gifted with great power. We protect the world from an ancient war, but time is running out, and only a few of us remain. Darkness looms. Yet, there is hope for the future. Ilya, his story is just beginning. I never finished my story. I don't want to hear stories, Darius. I want to know what's happening. Thomas, tell us the story of Mind's Eye. The story is about a young boy and his coming of age story and him and his childhood friend. His childhood friends aren't actually kids. They're adults. They're mystical heroes from various times in, in history and, and culture. And these mystical heroes have the ability to manifest reality through thought. They're called Dreamweavers. These heroes manifest themselves into the likeness of kids to protect this boy for two reasons. To keep anonymity and to let him have a normal life. And what they're keeping him anonymous from are, is an ancient war between demons and angels that are trying to get at this boy because they think that this boy is the key to, an ancient, to a victory, to an ancient war. On one side of the coin, it's kind of like Stand By Me meets Harry Potter. And then on the other side of the coin, it's like Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Final Fantasy with a little bit of homage to Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> That's great. I mean, when we reviewed it, the one thing that I really, really liked about it was the fact that you were doing a lot of live effects, not just CGI. Was that always your intention? Is it, was that, that wasn't necessarily a budget thing. It's like, we want things to look physical and real. You know, growing up watching movies, uh, you know, in the 80s and stuff, the effects were a lot more, they, they were mechanical effects back then. And so there was a sense of realism. Sometimes you look at it and you go, oh, come on, it would never look like that if it was a magical effect or whatever, you know. But there was an organic feel to things, and I'm very organic that way. Conceiving this project, we knew that there was going to be a lot of energy, a lot of like magical lightning and fire and things, and, and it's difficult to produce those mechanically and make that mystical feel. So we did use a lot of computer effects to make that happen, but then we used a lot of mechanical effects for things like smoke. Some of the fire was used for that. We used a lot of uh, crates and things when we were breaking boxes and smashing things and sword fighting and, and the cloaks and stuff. We tried to make that as, as real and as organic as possible. And, and so that's, you know, we, we, did, we did a nice blend of, of, of both. So that's that was kind of planned in the process. I wanted a more organic feel to the story, 80s feel. So one of the old adages of, of film production is never work with animals and children. But you work with a lot of children. And an animal. We had a bird. Well, yeah, I've heard a lot of things. You're not supposed to film during daylight outdoors in the woods. Uh, you're not supposed to do fight choreography on your first attempts at big projects like this. You're not supposed to work with kids. And just, we did it all. We did, uh, you know, three hours of sunlight windows with the massive sword fighting and kids and, and animals. <laughs> so we did it all. I don't know why. We just, you know, go big or go home. The first the first season, this is a prelude season, it's kind of uh, sort of a launching pad for the show it, it it starts off as a web series and i think we're going to end up you know we're aiming to go broadcast with it uh this season itself is uh, a little slow in the pacing we've got a you know like any first show uh, first season smallville buffy they all have a very difficult first season because of exposition and, and getting a, co a new concept sort of delivered to an audience we find that this is a big challenge for us and uh, now that we've got that sort of uh, out there this this will become sort of a prelude introductory piece to a season that we're shooting in the fall which is an official season two and, and so that's going to be uh, pretty exciting stuff because every barrier has been upgraded there. How did you raise the finance? Let's see here. First credit card, second credit card, third credit card, four, five credit cards. <laughs> Kevin Smith style, you know. Right. Uh, go big or go home. Fortunately, our studio does a lot of corporate work as well. And if anyone is in the film industry, I don't know what it's like here in, in uh, the UK, but in, in Canada and the US, uh, corporate work pays very well. So uh, basically, we just burned the midnight oil and then uh, worked all day and then burned the midnight oil again and crashed when we had to. So we worked a lot of corporate work, used a lot of that proceeds to fund the show and then just go from there. And a lot, a lot of help from the cast and crew. They were, they worked for, for nothing except for, uh, I guess you could say the memories and the good times. They had a blast and uh, now season two coming up, we've raised the bar. So now everyone's getting a little bit something and the funding is being raised through myself again. Uh, and through some other private sources, and of course our uh, our marketing run. So what we're doing, which we're doing right now, which is why I'm here in London, which is awesome. Coming to convention, how how do you feel it helps the series and the, and the series awareness for genre films, sci-fi, fantasy, and depending on the convention, horror. Uh, I find that genre films fit in here. This is this is sort of the the breeding ground for fandom. 
other series such as comedy series and drama series, which are the majority of web series that I've noticed. I don't think this would be a venue for them. It's difficult for you know for comedy series to get out here or for a drama series to, to get out here because people are here for sci-fi, fantasy-oriented things. People are here for horror. Um, so you know we got to go to the fantastic. And so for us, I find these conventions are probably the most effective. So internet advertising is one way where you can get a multitude of eyes to look at your stuff. But when you boil it down, it's like buckets, buckets to to bottles with maple syrup. When you're trying to, you know, get internet advertising, but here we have a chance to talk to people, we have a chance to meet people and create a lasting impression. And even if they don't necessarily like the show for one reason or another, they'll still give it a chance because you're out here dogging it, and people really respect that, at an, especially at an indie level. And stars kind of do too. You know, they're sitting at their table signing things as well, and they see us and pushing the barriers, and and they respect that because they were once there too. This is your first not North American convention? This is the first not Canada, not US. It's the first non North American convention. I was really excited about this. One, because I love England, and any excuse to fly over here is a good excuse to me. And two, I really, it's a whole different crowd, different vendors, uh, a lot of different uh, stars and, and, uh, as well, and a whole different demographic of people that could look at the show. I'm a, I was a bit nervous about coming here because my character is from London back in the day, so I had an English accent, so I was kind of hoping I could uh, you know, hear some feedback on, on how good or poor my English was, or well or poor my English was, uh, my accent. And uh, two, I was really excited for the for to hear everyone speak because that way it's, it's almost like a learning ground. So I can sit there and listen to the different. And so people must think I'm insane because I've been sitting at the booth going, um, the water, the water, the wa what, water, water, and then people are looking at me going, what the hell's wrong with this guy? And I'm like, water from Majorca doesn't taste like it ought to, ought, ought, ought to, ought to. <laughs> I'll, I'll get it eventually. So yeah. Um, the reception's been great. I mean, uh, people have stopped and, and chatted about it. We've had some merchandise being moved. Uh, a lot of our uh, promo material has been given out. A lot, a lot. So people have been taking stuff. Um, but the English don't take it unless you like literally just go like this to them. I notice they don't stop at the tables and look. They Or if they do, they won't take it unless you say, go ahead, take one. And they'll be like, give it to them. They go, oh, thanks. And they're excited. So it's like there's a shyness. There's a, there's a lack of like Italian lo love, you know. <laughs> Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take to shoot the series? And were you actually shooting in between your corporate work as well? Or did you get to shoot it all in one go? We shot it all in one go, one month, uh, 26 days. And, uh, we had a four-day break in between that 26 days, so it was more like 30 days. But we had a four-day break, and I took on a really big corporate project in, that, in those four days off, uh, which replenished the coffers enough to continue with the second half of the show for food and for fuel and things that, you know, things that uh, expendables we can't get rid of or we can't uh, get for free. So yeah, we shot it all in about a month, and we spent about six months in post and uh, during the launching period. Now that it's over, we've got some different plans for it. Uh, we w the, the format that we exhibited it on was five-minute episodes. Uh, it didn't work, so we've reformatted it to 28-minute episodes, 25-minute episodes, half-hour pieces. It seems to be working a lot better. People are, are getting into it more. And I find that uh, fantasy genre, sci-fi, uh, you have to give your audience some time to digest. Uh, you can't uh, you can't just get in there, hit them, and get out. That's comedy. That's that's horror. You can get in there, you can hit them, you can get out, and the people will go cool. But fantasy, you've got to give them minutes to figure out what the hell's going on. And so uh, we 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 reform reformatted it and relaunched it sort of piece. And uh, we'll find out where we're going to go from here. We've got uh, some pretty good news and stuff that's been happening for the next next round, and so we're pretty excited. Are you one of the first web series that's, that's probably actually just tested a format and then re-edited it after feedback? I haven't heard of anyone else doing that. Um, I guess you could say it's kind of like the George Lucas of things. You know, we like it, we put it out there, let's redo it. I realized it didn't work, and uh, we have gone too deep to consider a, like a restart kind of thing. So we just sort of modify. And I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of viewers and potential fans that haven't seen the show yet. So there's an opportunity to do that. And the fans that we already have, are very happy so far. I've received a lot of positive feedback with the change. So I th maybe, maybe we're one of the first. I mean, the, the fir we're the first that I know of, and I think it works. I definitely, I mean, I think the series isn't unlike what you would normally expect to see on children's television. It is actually pretty spot on. It does look the part, the production values up there, with certainly as far as uh, the stuff that I see on British children's TV, you know, it certainly would have a good chance to make it to broadcast. Well, we've been speaking to a couple of people. We have a broadcast producer involved now. Um, she's very excited, and she's she's got a very strong head on her shoulder. And we have a DVD distributor that we've been talking to, and both of them have said the same thing, independent. They both have said, oh, you are almost there, almost. 
I got an almost, which is better than a no thank you, right? So almost there has uh, brought a lot of uh, attention my way, and I've uh, educated myself with these people very diligently and managed to learn what I need to do to get there. And uh, the process is working wonderfully. So we actually have a couple of names attached to the show now. The season two is going to roll in with these names attached. And so this season two is more or less going to be aimed to be a broadcast season. So the format is we're shooting you know, longer episodes with, with the intention to fit commercials and whatnot so that it's already prepared as a television mm -hmm. set. So it can go on the web if we need to, but we're aiming for broadcast at this point. And we've done the equipment upgrade. We've done everything. So we're, you know, we're stepping up for the next round. Does that also mean that p you have potential then to then apply for some of the Canadian production funds? Absolutely, yes. Uh, now that we have this network producer involved, uh, there's an opportunity to get a lot more from the government in lines of for broadcasting. So we're really excited about that. I'm not relying on that funding. We have a couple of, because of the names we have attached, we have a couple of in private investors that are interested in taking the next step with us. Uh, and we're still going to try and keep it as low-balled as possible. Uh, cost-wise because the range that we're starting to build up now I don't actually know how I could pay that back if I don't get broadcast deals so I'm trying to keep it within a range that I know I can recover through merchandising and and, and sales and and ad revenues and whatnot at a low scale uh, cost without without compromising the quality of the show we have to st if you think the quality of the show is great and, I, and I, I'm glad you do uh, we really want to step it up to another level because we think it's a great show too but there's always the next level always even when you get to avatar stages there's always the next level so we're going to try and keep pushing our boundaries casting the children how long did that take was it really hard process just finding those right kids oh yeah it was a hard process uh, a lot of the children weren't seasoned um, actors and uh, in some some episodes i think we can see that uh, and they've grown a lot in second season you won't see as much of them you will see them they're not but they're not the foreground now uh, the story as it is i mean there's no need to hide anymore We'll still see them because ultimately it is, you know, their characters still have an attachment base now, but it's going to be more based on the main child and, and actually the Dreamweaving character, the heroes themselves, and so the story is going to develop there. So uh, the casting process was interesting. I mean, uh, the hardest one to cast was the Asian kid. We had a, a whole slew of auditions come in, but none of them actually came to the audition, and so at one point we were panicking, and, and I mean, I don't mean to be slanderous, but I mean, it's like, a lot of Asians where I come from and I'm thinking this is like it was impossible it was you know it's impossible it's so easy to find a young white boy and there's not that many of them around and then I couldn't find an Asian actor it was driving me crazy and then finally one kid came in and he just you know George Ray and he was he's great he was awesome we were so happy because uh you know he he made the show I think he's one of the best of the kids so well it all sounds very exciting and um, thank you very much the website mindseyeseries.com is where you can go to find the show uh, some great announcements on there. Stay tuned. There's news every couple of days. London, England, you guys rock. UK, you guys are amazing. Those video guys are awesome as well. Uh, plug them, promote them. You'll see stuff on the website soon enough for them. So make sure you visit them, like their Facebook page and all that. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Take care.